Hi, it's Pearl here again, um, and this is a podcast today about um, why we suffer and the art of compassion, how we can have more compassion for ourselves and for other people. And um, I watched some videos recently on YouTube, which were great, uh, really, really great, from Thich Nhat Hanh talking about compassion, and they made a lot of sense to me, but they were very long. <laughs> they were about like an hour and a half each. So I wanted to do a little five-minute podcast, um, just because this is something that comes up really every day, and something that's really been on my mind the last couple of months. So I just wanted to really just do a couple of minutes about this. So the first thing was um, when I was watching this video, uh, and really a thing had been come, uh, the thought I'd been having for a while was I was going through some stuff and I was feeling pretty bad about it. And it's very irritating, especially when you've done a lot of work and you do a lot of the practice of mindfulness and meditation, things like that, to sort of think, well, hang on, how come I keep coming back to a place where I feel like I'm really suffering and I'm having a really hard time with this? And so one of the things that he says is that it's very hard for us to have, it's it almost impossible for us to have compassion for other people unless we've suffered ourselves. So a big part of having compassion for other people is our own suffering. And he talks a lot about this being like a plant that is growing. And in order for the plant to grow, we have to have some mud um, and obviously some rain and all these other things. And so for the compassion, the flower of compassion to, to grow, we really need to have that mud in our lives. Otherwise, it's very, very hard for us to be truly compassionate with other people. And... Um, he also talks about how, how babies can actually be very compassionate, um, even if they don't understand complexity. When we see somebody suffering, we can kind of, a baby might hand hand another child a toy or, 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 or give them a pat or something like that. So there is an innate, um, there's a nature within us that, that asks us, that sort of, you know, prompts us to kind of look after other people and to and to take care of their suffering. But I think that sometimes when we're dealing with certain types of things, you know, it really helps to have somebody who's been through something similar. And one of the people I was talking to, um, I remember last year, she was, we were talking about, um, she was going through a period where she felt very, very jealous. And, and it was really nice for me to be able to talk about a period in my life when I've been going through something like that. Because it does help sometimes when somebody understands it. For example, I talked to somebody else and we were talking about jealousy and they went, oh, no, I never get jealous. Never. You like, Okay, but you know it's hard. It's hard for that person to really understand what you're going through if they've never experienced anything at all similar to that. So that that was really a kind of a relief for me to feel like okay, there is a point to this suffering. That there is something. This suffering we can take it, and we can take care of ourselves and our own feelings, and then that in turn can help us to help others when they're suffering and going through something. So that's really important. Um, the other thing that I really felt when I was watching this is I, I the other thing I felt was recently I felt like you know how come I can't I can't be there for other people how come I can't you know step out and and be the person I want to be right now and I also got the you know the answer through through his talks and his speeches were you know that we first need to look after our own suffering and have compassion for ourselves so uh, in certain, this was a very good talk actually, it was um, a talk uh, with a, a doctor um, in America and he, he has a study, a centre for the compassionate studies and they talk a lot to doctors and nurses who may feel that they sort of run out of compassion and I think, you know, we all have that at times where we feel like we, we run out of being able to sympathise with somebody or, or spend time with somebody who, who calls up on us to be very compassionate and you know, he says, yeah, this is the thing, we have to be able to come back and, and nurture ourselves, look after ourselves. Because if we, we're kind of like asking for that from ourselves and we don't have it, you know, A, we can't really be honestly giving compassion and, and B, it kind of, it, it can hurt us, I think. So the most important thing with compassion as well is to make sure that we are looking after ourselves and our own feelings. If we're feeling very angry about something, it can be very, very hard to then go in and help somebody else deal with their anger. Um, and that was very important to me. And also some of the practices, you know, reading some of the amazing practices stay in my head, you know, things like compassionate listening or, um, you know, things like that. And, but when you look at deeply at the practice and you look carefully at the, if you like the small print of the practice, 
um, things like compassionate listening, deep listening, loving listening. You know, when you go into it and you read it through, it says, you know, there comes a point where you have to take yourself out of that if it becomes too difficult because you have to recognize your own difficulties with things. And, you know, it's a bit like the fitness thing. You know, when we do that, we want to help people, we want to give to other people, but there's a point when we have to go home. You know, we have to sleep. We have to take care of our own needs, our own, you know, need to eat, to drink, to look after ourselves. And sometimes I think we, uh, all, all of us as a society, we tend to think, oh, you should be nice to somebody. You should be listening. You should be careful. You should be, should, should, should. And before you... Before you can give to other people, you do need to give to yourself. I always say you can't give to other people what you don't give to yourself. Um, if you ever get to the position where you feel like you're running on empty, um, it's important to come back to yourself, come back to your your daily practices of whether it's mindfulness or, or prayer or, or whether it's just, um, you know, just, just taking a few moments to, to sit down and eat a meal in peace. We need that in order to be able to give to other people. So... Listening to all that, you know, it took me a long time to listen to, but it really made a lot of sense to me. I do recommend the, the talks, and I'll put links on for the talks, um, because also it's nice to have it, uh, you know, come to you very slowly, because then you can kind of absorb it better. But for me, I also felt like I wish I had a five-minute one like this. That's going to be a bit more than five minutes. But something that I could tap into really quickly, um, because sometimes it's just such a relief when you hear those answers, and you hear, oh, yeah... And why can't I do this? Why can't I? Because, you know, you're human. So I'm just going to finish up again. Uh, some of the other podcasts I've done, I've talked about emotions and, and, and particularly anger and taking care of your anger. Um, one of the things that Thich Nhat Hanh or Tay says is, you know, when we have a strong emotion, we need to almost treat it like a baby, you know, that it's crying out and it's crying out for our attention and for our care and our love instead of shouting at the baby we're going to take care of it so if we're feeling angry if we're feeling sad um feeling jealous or anything like that we need to take care of that emotion and look after it so that it doesn't take over and uh um the emotion i was just going to talk a little bit about was um again it's always you know fear and anger and things like that tend to be big triggers for us and if we can look compassionately at where those things come from um, very often it is love turned around, you know, like, um, I got really annoyed, angry at my, one of my relatives over Christmas because they, they were walking along and they, and there was a child and she ran out across the road. And of course, you know, you shout because it's the shock and the anger. But of course, underneath that is the fear that something's going to happen to them if they run out into the road. And underneath that, of course, is the love that you care so deeply about that person. So... Sometimes just taking a few moments just to relax and come back to where we are and, and remember where where those negative emotions are coming from. Like very often I'll feel very sad uh, when I'm with my family and I think, why do I feel so sad? And it's because I'm already anticipating saying goodbye and going home. And, you know, if I can stay in the moment and stay in the moment, then I can enjoy that time and remember that the sadness comes from how, how much I really love them all and how precious that time is. So to stay in that moment, to enjoy that moment, but then to, to let it go and remember that there will be other times that we spend together and, you know, that that, that sadness really comes from a, a great joy of being with them and sharing with them. And like we, Tay Tignat Han says as well, that, you know, we think we have an emotion that, that is alone. But really, you know, our joy is our sadness. They are two sides of the same coin. And our love is our, our fear and our anger. So when we can start to look at our own emotions with compassion and take care of them, literally in a second, you know, I can go from being sad at a family gathering to or even at an event where I'm thinking oh I'm sad because this is almost over staying in that moment I can appreciate that sadness comes from the desire to to stay there to be with those people and how and how wonderful that is in its own way and that you know allows me to be compassionate with myself and also to anybody else like the children when they get very upset that they're going home and they start to cry because they don't want to leave <laughs> And it's quite nice. It's quite a nice place to be. Anyway, I hope that helps. And I will put the links to the other longer talks. And I, and I wish you a happy new year because it is January. Okay, take care. Bye-bye.